play what? Jigs. Our work, particular work, or okay. jigs. Okay. And then now Kay is very a Catholic, so no, no jigs for like her at all. And now they have children. So now the children are what are they if that's the math, is that a twenty five percent group? Are those two daughters twenty five percent group? Well see so the Catholic thing is a religious thing. The Jewish thing okay, is, so a D, is a so DNA so thing and a religious thing. Yeah, so they married a goyim. They, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A yeah. Jew and a goyim, and now they have two but daughters. That, yeah, see, for, so, so for me, I'm, I'm thinking of my, my best answer for this is going to be when the woman is of a Jewish lineage and she gives birth and that child's a Jew. That's what I think it is, myself. Because you know, you know why I say that? To me, the definitive argument ends with Jesus. Was Joseph his dad? <laughs> no. Oh, I see. Is he called king of the Jews? Uh, yeah. So what made him a Jew then? His mom. It must have been. It wasn't him. Don't tell me it was Joseph because he had no relations to have Jesus. That was God so the Father. So that means that Kenny's two daughters are not Jewish. If, it, if it, he's the Jew and he married, Jew. he married a non-Jew, I would he's say that. He's 100% Jew. I would say no. Yeah. That's my take on that. I based on that premise of scripture that I see. You know what I mean? He was married to Jesus. Yeah. Because otherwise, how can he be Jewish? But there's no other way to explain that other than you're, you're saying he's putting the earmark of Jewish demarcation on the woman's womb. It's the woman's womb that determines Jewishness, not the man's sperm. It's her egg. Wait, what's in sper what about Jews? What about Paul? What about it? Were both his parents Jewish? He's a Benjamite, absolutely. He says he was a Benjamite. He said so. No, that was Timothy. Timothy's dad was Greek. Not, no, he was a Jew. He was a Jew. A, he was a Pharisee of Pharisees. You can't be a Pharisee of Pharisees unless you're all full. You're full Jew, man. So there's more corroboration. Fake news. You're saying. Just kidding. Correct. That too. Yep. Yeah. Corroboration. Yep. But how do we know it was one of Mary's eggs, her actual egg? As, 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 as opposed to it's the God giving an egg. Yeah, okay, so I'll strike that and just say Jewish womb. I know that's okay. I know she, I know he's in the womb. I know that. <laughs> so right. we'll just say Jewish womb. How about that? That's probably. Okay. So, so it's like saying you married the way God that was the intention. Right? I would think so. Then why can't it be Jewish sperm then? Because Joseph wasn't the one who was responsible. No, I'm, they're his for his friend, not for his family, no, for his friend. Because there's and no. That, because there's no premise, that's what we're saying. What we're saying is there's no premise that I can see in scripture where a person born of a man is Jewish and a woman's not Jewish where that constitutes that person being Jewish. I don't, I don't see so that anymore. So does it have to do with the fact that the mother's blood is involved with the child? The they're, they're sharing, the yeah. There's no blood really, you know. But the difference in Jesus and Mary, that didn't happen. Whereas in the Catholics yeah. believe that did happen. They believe that Jesus and Mary share the same blood, which is why they think Mary's sinless. Mm -hmm. See, you gotta be careful with that. <laughs> But, but the whole thing is, they, when you start getting the shared blood of mother and child, they start de deifying Mary, like, just like that. They, you fall right into their, yes, come to me, I love pretty. They love yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> but they know that, but yeah, like, I'm just, I well, they believe that how can a sinless person dwell in, in a gestation cycle inside a sinful person? How can that happen? Yeah. And, I'm, and that's what they're saying. That's the Catholic that's argument. That's true. That's yeah. their argument, right? That's true. And I just simply say, the same reason how a woman can become pregnant by the Holy Spirit. You explain how that works. And I'll explain how that works. Okay, they, they, it's part of the same process. It's miraculous. That's why it's called the miraculous virgin birth. That's why she's called the Virgin Mary. How can you be a virgin person and have a baby right. inside you? That made no sense. So the whole thing is whack a doodle. I get it. So it's not supposed to make sense. That's what God does. So I don't know how to answer that question. I don't know. Oh, the dad who has who has. Oh, with a father who's married a woman who's not Jewish? Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they would. I'm sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because they're sure. not looking at the bear. They're not looking at the New Testament with their mask. They're yeah. Looking yeah. Looking at the airship of his. No, that's true. That's how he passed on his possessions to his kids. Yeah. But, but his we're also don't, do we know that he knows but that every Jew that's supposed to live in the New Testament? What's that? Like, does he know the genealogy of all those? Do we trust no. to know? No, I'm just saying. I, say that. I'm just saying. I have two examples to believe in Timothy okay. and in Jesus. One's a regular human, and one's a supernatural God. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that in both cases, they both definitively earmark that they have one consistent variable, mm -hmm. and that the mom was a Jew. Mm -hmm. 
and the dad definitively was, n was not in play. One was not a Jew, Timothy's dad, and one was a Jew but not in play in Joseph. So in both cases, the mom was the common denominator, but they both were called Jews. Mm -hmm. So I would, that's a pretty strong argument if I was in a court. I'm just saying, as the jury, what would you vote? I'd vote yay. <laughs> I'm just well, saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. You, do you follow what I'm saying? Greg's like, I don't know, man. <laughs> I'm listening. Okay. So anyways, that's, so, so I think that the percent of Jewish issue is really not a percent so much as it is, as it is if it's, no, if, so in other words, if, if the, but, but to your, but, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> but then, then it goes back to your point is, so what if, so what if the man and, and the woman he's married to, to your point, Todd, have a girl and that girl becomes married. So to Tracy's point, if that happened like six generations before, I don't know about it, and who exists today is the woman, but she came from a lineage where there's a guy who was Jewish and married a non-Jewish girl. I didn't know that. Here we are six generations later, and I see a girl who's Jewish, and I go, oh, her kids are Jewish. Well, that can't be, because she was negated way back then, because she wasn't Jewish back then. Does that make sense? So that's the question you're asking, and I don't know the answer to that question, to your point. That's why I'm saying I don't know. But we know this for a fact. There's a chart that's right there that mm -hmm. says Mary was, in fact, Jewish all the way through. So we know that for a fact. <laughs> so, so she was Jewish all, all the way through. So there was no deviation there. But so, so was Joseph. Joseph was, Joseph too. He spoke with her dad. He, he spoke with his dad. dad but he was so he, that's why that's the one example definitively. To your point, around. that's the one definitive example I can, I can, without reservation, hold my hat on. And so unequivocally, yes, that's the one example in the Bible we do know the z from zero, from Adam, from Ha'adam, to the human, Jew, 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 you know, bloodline, Hebrew, Israelite, Jew, right. and Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, that means the woman's a big deal. That's what I would, based on that, it's the only evidence I have that can track back from the beginning, the origin of man, to the Virgin Mary. To the Virgin Mary. Yeah. Who else can do that? Who else can go, I, I, I got my history back from Shem. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. It's a liar. Couldn't be after 70 AD because all the temple records were destroyed. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. That, that's right. Temple records were gone. So you don't know. So anyways, so I don't know how to answer the question other than saying that. But I would say to your point, the percentage issue becomes negated when you're thinking about the fact of not knowing the origin itself, to your point. So that question kind of leads into your, your question, which is true, which is why I don't know. But if you could know, I think that's the premise. If you can say you're back to your mom staying in the Jewish line, then yes. But who's going to know that? I don't I don't. No way. But Shem, Ham, and Japheth, I'm sure that they Doesn't know. created all, all the humanity. All the um, ethnic people of the world. Ethnic yeah. people, yes. yes. So the question is, we got a Shem. Real yeah, out of, but it started um, with Shem, yes. and then there were Shemites, then there was Hebrews, then there was Israelites, then there were Jews, to be mm -hmm. technical. Yeah, but I mean, I'm saying like, what are you it saying? Help me. Ethnically, it's not true. It would be in science. There's, you know, how the answer. There's all these different ethnicities and categories, and Hispanic and African American and white and blah blah blah. But there's only really three, and they go back to those three people. Oh yeah. And they became. You were Caucasian. You were. You were Asian. You um, Pacific Islander. Yep. Or you were African. Yep. And Melding those became Hispanic, which is mm -hmm. yeah, that's all true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That's true. That's I know fact. It's true because look up their charts. Yeah, that's all yeah. fact. Yeah, that's on that chart right there. Everybody's ignoring different things. That's, that's on that. What, what you, what you just said, said, said on that chart right there. It's right there, it's right there behind yeah, you. Yeah, no, I know. It's just a thing. That's right there. It's yeah. Wrong. yeah. So all so all we're saying is that you have to come from Shem to have been say that you know for sure. If you have any tie to Ham or Japheth, there's no way. You weren't pure well, Jew. Right, exactly. you're you're pure. Yeah, pure you can't be. You have to be pure Jew. How can you know that? Just because your mom was Jewish and she practiced, you don't know if she came from Jewish line. Well, then you can say no one is pure Jewish. Well, you're trusting that the generations passed on is keeping the honest reality. I don't know that first, but God does. That's why That's why you don't know 144,000 on. That's the whole point. Yeah. To your point. There's going to be them, but we don't know who they are. That's why. 
All right. So. Well, I guess so. So, sorry, but we got off track. I don't know how I got on that subject. Yes. Uh, I just had a quick question. Did you say Adamo's Jewish? No. No. If I said that, I was wrong. I didn't say that. I didn't mean to say that. No. If I did say that, I was wrong. If I said that, I was wrong. I'm just saying. No, I'm sorry. I, mean, I think I think what you're talking about is what I what I did say was on yeah, on this you can trace from Ha Adam to Mary that she was Jewish. I said that, so I think that makes it sound like I didn't mean to say that mm -hmm. like that. What I okay. meant was what I meant was is that Mary can go back to a line of the beginning of mankind and show how out of Ha Adam came his kids and they were wiped off the face of the planet except for Noah and his three kids and those three kids uh, out of Shem came the line of uh, Abram came out of and then Abram and so forth. I'm saying Mary could trace her line back to Shem, back to Abram, technically speaking. So who? That's what that is. Who was the first Jewish mother? That, well, it's a good point. Um, yeah. To because be technically, that would be, be Sarah. you to be Jewish, you had to have a Jewish mother who Sarah. Well, Well, to be technical, she was a Jew retroactively. I like the way you think. <laughs> no, it'd be, <laughs> no, you're, you're right, it's right. She had the breath of God changed her life. Remember, her name was changed from Sarah to Sarah. So her S -A name was S A R A I. What's her name? Yeah. Sarai. Sarai. She was changed to Sarah. The breath of God changed her life. So and that changed the Jewish mother. Yes. Jewish, Jewish the first Jewish Sarah. mother would be Sarah. 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 Mm -hmm. Sarah though. Mm -hmm. Abraham. But retroactively, because because you didn't know that until later on when Jacob got born from through Isaac and Rebecca. You wouldn't know that until later on. Because that's why God says I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You have to have all three in view to know that. If you take her by herself, you wouldn't know that. Mm -hmm. You have to say what came out of her. Isaac, Isaac is a promise seed. What came out of the promise seed? Well, he had a, he had he had kids. He had two of them. But God said the one was loved more than the other. Okay, you're giving me more to go on here, God. And he goes, the Jacob one. Stick with that one. <laughs> okay. He changed his name to Israel. Then he had twelve boys and one girl. And then the, and then so that's where the Jews came from, out of Israel. Jacob. Jacob came out of Isaac. Isaac came out of Sarah. So that goes retroactively. That makes Sarah the mother, is the first mother of the Jewish people. So the first Jewish mother was actually created, not not made. Made. It's a good Born. point. Well, she was ma actually created means out of nothing. So you could say made, forged by God. So he, she was made because out of something. She already was a human. She already had her DNA code, but God just made her into a different human type. Because he breathed his breath into her, changed her name. That's what the whole name change was about. But I know, I know a grower grapes bones is created. And uh, you mean what you're saying is, yeah, he, yeah. he made a fresh new thing that didn't yes. exist before. Yeah. He made a fresh new thing that never existed. Yes. Out of no reference Correct. to nothing, yes. uh, out of no reference point from before, he just made it out of thin air. Okay. God just said, that's you're now, you you're, yeah. that's what you mean, but it's a different word. Yes. <laughs> because the word created that God means technically means he does that same thing, okay. but out of thin air. Right. Out of nothing, he just yeah. goes, a goose. You're like, but from where? Yeah. Just my thought. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas he goes, oh, here's a, here's a, a fish. Uh, it's different out of a popcorn thing. Well, you know, it's different. Like what happened anyway? So, I mean, all of a sudden, you're, that's why he's a Jewish. Jewish. I agree with Craig. Out of thin air, he just gave his terminology. Did she leave? The Hebrew, the Hebrew was out of thin air, from which came she became. I guess you could say you could say to be ten, you could say she was created and made because she was created out of no, out of thin air to be Hebrew. Which then, from that, right. she was made into retroactively a Jewish mother. I wouldn't say created Jewish because that came after things that we didn't they didn't call her Jewish. She was no such thing. She was Hebrew, married to Abram the Hebrew. Well, created is kind of like the beginning of something. No, I know, and and that and that's the created the beginning of something is that God made Hebrew out of thin air. He made the language, the culture, all that out of thin air. He told Abraham how to talk, how to dress. Because there's no way to explain how he goes from chapter 11, a polytheistic, worshiping, idol worshiper guy, to chapter 15. Now they say, ooh, Abraham, this Hebrew. Well, why would you call him a Hebrew? That makes no sense. That's the first mention of the whole Bible. There's nobody before called a Hebrew. How'd that happen? And then in between there, he, he stops at the Oaks of Mamre, which means teacher, which makes me believe God taught him Hebrew at that point and said, let me help you understand, son. I'm going to change your whole background. Forget where you came from. It's not going to be changed now. To your point, I'm going to create. I'm going to create an ulterior timeline. It's like God. You want to take a picture of this? Want to take a picture of this? It's like God saying, "I'm going to make an ulterior timeline." You're going to. You were. You were. You were starting off Ur of the Chaldees, Ur of the Chaldees, and He just stops it and goes, "Alternate timeline. You're now Hebrew." 
So when you say created, you're correct. It's a new time that was created. But it wasn't out of nothing. It was out of a previous timeline. He already exists. Yeah. So that's why I'm, be I'm being technical. You're correct. But I'm being technical to st help, help you understand that the word, the way God uses the word created means out of nothing. Mm -hmm. But there was a timeline before. This man did exist. This man did exist, and God, out of him, created a new timeline. So it is a new timeline created, but out of an existing human being's timeline. Does that make sense? That's why I'm saying you speak. To be technical, you can say he created him, but out of something that was already made. He created a new timeline out of something that was made. Out of thin air, he made a new timeline. Just made out of nothing. Thin air, just a timeline. But out of something that was already there. He created and made the Hebrew people. <laughs> yeah, I wish it was there, but it's not. I'm sorry. It's not there. But if you look at, but, but to your point, though, but, but, but to your point, Greg, to remember, in Genesis chapter 2, he says in verse 3, and God blessed seventh day, sanctified it, hallowed it, because that in it he rested from all the work that, that Elohim God created and made. So that's black and white, but it also makes you kind of go, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> right. But he said it there, so that kind of brings evidence to this same thing. So God is capable of saying in the same sentence, I created and made. So he demarcates the two different things. They're two different things to him. They were the same, you know what I mean? They're not the same. As he's resting from both things. So we don't really have a definition of what that created, created or made is. Yeah, made is formed and fashioned, and created is out of nothing. Okay. Out of God himself. In other words, the re the, the how you create, create something is out of it, it, its origin and its essence is from God himself. The origin, the essence, and the resource is from God when it's created. When it's made, it's our something that God already has made. So God himself is using a resource that he made already to then make something. So he's already made the dirt, for example, the clay. So it's already out of him, and he's using the clay to make us. So he created the clay out of nothing. So he created the clay. Out of that nothing. Out of that, he makes Ahadam. Ah he made man. But man was made, not created. Because he created, he created the clay. He didn't create, he didn't create the man. He created the clay and made the man. Does that make sense? Sure. You're just like, sure. <laughs> well, no, he didn't create the animals. He made the animals, except for the great, except for the great. It doesn't. It no, no, I was just saying as an example. But he did, he did do that with the whale, with the great fish. He created the great fish. That's the only thing that he created was the great fish, the whale, which people, that's what it says, out of nothing. I don't know. He just says, great whale. Correct. 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 Birds, reptiles, beasts of the field, fishes, everything. Everything was made except for the great whale. He says he created that. I, to me, it reminds me of the of the rainbow, which came out of nowhere. He just went kaboom. He created the rainbow out of nowhere, and so it's like he did the great whale to remind us of the first flood. That's what I think, because the rainbow was the second flood. Remember, there was two floods. That's why I think he always creates something out of nowhere to remind you of what happened the previous time. And by the way, if you know, if you I don't know if you understand this or not, but watch this. Remember how? Remember. No, dinosaurs were on the ark. Job saw them. Job saw dinosaurs. Well, yeah, Job saw them. And Job, he saw dragons, fire out of his mouth, remember? Well, they were the after, were they not? What were the I don't know about no before. There's no, there's no reference in that. The, that's, a, that's, a, that's a theology people have of this, what they call a gap theory. People have yeah. that theology. <laughs> Gary used to have that theology, by the way. I don't hold to that theology, that there was dinosaurs before man. I don't hold to that. I think I personally hold to the belief that there was Satan and there was angelic angels that were here, and they screwed things over, and then it got dark, and then the first time us kind of folk and the animals were here was what you see in Genesis chapter 1. That's the first time animals and humans existed here was that point. Not before that point. Because people go before that point. You know what they do? They put dinosaurs before that point. Before and they, you, know, you know what they do next? Watch this now. Slippery slope. They put cavemen. I'm like, dude, cavemen are fake, you doofus. They're not even real. That's all, makes, that's all a made-up story. But they have nowhere to go with that. Once you put dinosaurs, like cavemen are like, it's like cookies and cream. They go together. So they put them there. And they go, I'm like, no, you 
Oh my gosh, you just made it. See, it's a slippery slope of idiocy. Don't do that. And besides that, Job saw dinosaurs. He, he said so. Mm -hmm. He saw a dragon. It wasn't some like, you know, Middle Eastern, I mean, middle of medieval times thing. He saw, he said he saw it. Like, what's up? I'm just telling you, God said he saw it. He said he saw it. And then when you read the, it's funny, you want to have a good laugh? Read the commentaries of Job 41 and 42 and you just laugh hysterically. Because people will go, and here God uses the myth to describe to Job, but God's lying. God references a folklore. Really? Get out of your, out of your mind, dude. And God's going to go, okay, so Mother Goose then told our little children and live in a shoe. Yeah, right. He's not going to talk about some falsehood. Why would he do that? He has so much truth to draw from. Oh, I know what he'll do. Let's use a lie. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so the, the man who named himself the truth is going to use a <laughs> falsehood. That makes no sense. That makes no sense. What? The Leviathan of Job? The Leviathan was the dragon. The behemoth was the mega, the, we used to think it was a T-Rex, but now it's the other one. It's called, what's it called? The mega, what's that thing? Megalodon. Oh, no, that's no, no, the fish. No, no. That's the fish. There's, a a one, there's one bigger than the T-Rex. They found the most bones bigger than the T-Rex. Forget its name. Titana, no, Titana Boa is the Titanoboa, snake. Titanoboa. There's, there's another, there's a, there's a dinosaur bigger than T-Rex. If you look at it, they found its record. It's, it's, mo it's monstrous. It's bigger than the T-Rex. That's the behemoth with the long tail. It's like a T-Rex. It's just bigger. <laughs> it's just huge. They can eat it for lunch. Yeah, eat it. Where'd they find it? I, I think it was South America, if I'm not mistaken. There's a lot of these back there. South America. I thought that was, if I remember correctly, that was, that was a person in Germany, Netherlands area that had rickets in their hips after investigation of their bones, and they were hunched over from being a person who was a, I think it was a, 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 a they were like a, what do you call that person, like a farmer, and it was always doing their, veg, with their gardening and all that, and after doing, after being, after being a blue collar, hard, hard hand working person with arthritis in your hips, you tend to look like this. Yeah. Same thing with the cave. And by the way, I've seen people in real life look like that. <laughs> uh, have you? I have, real life, right now in this world. <laughs> so it's not far fetched to believe that could happen. I see it right now. My uncle lost complete weight. He's, I don't know, maybe like 85, maybe a little older. But he literally, this is how he walks. Yeah. And I'm not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. Once you can't get fat. He was a big man. He at one point was like, you know, a solid six foot. He, he literally just wants to touch it. Yeah, it's just, it's yeah. part of the story it is. Bone is. Yeah. 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 Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah. Anyway, what's your question? So, and Lucy, remember they, remember they, they say um, Cro-Magnon man, is, they took a tooth of a pig, the skull of an ape, and the jaw of a human and molded them all together and said, look, Lucy, really? That's not even a real skull. You just, you just doctored the whole thing. Wait, you mean the it's not real. Thing in after the museum in Chicago? It's not real. It's not real. It's well, all fake. They're not real, they not real but, they, but, they, but the Lucy, the Lucy was the missing link they all looked to. Lucy is the name of the missing link they found. Oh, oh you're talking about the ape thing. That's the ape, that's the evolution. The, the, the caveman thing. So they use Lucy with the tooth of a pig, skull of, a, of an ape, and the, and the jawbone of a human, and go, or I think it's maybe a jawbone of an no, ape and no. skull of a human. But either way, they mix all three together and go, look, Lucy, you mean, look, science fiction. Doesn't, it's, not, it's not true. It's not true. <laughs> look, chip corn. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense what you're doing. It's all, it's all fake. It doesn't make any sense. But they, there's a whole book on this that Ken Ham, the guy who did the Ark experience in Kentucky, he wrote a whole book on this. And it's all the book, yeah, that's what it's called. And it's all in that book. I remember some of it from that, from that. It's a great book. I could get multiple pictures. You got, you got this one here? Yes. Okay. No. No, yes. I didn't send it. I took a picture of it. Got a picture, babe? Yes. Yeah, you did. You did. Yes. Okay. So here we go. So Nancy Harbor left, huh? She did. She left she gone. right after the box came to get home. Oh, that's right. She stayed so much. That's right. That's right. So. So.
<laughs> You're out of the loop? So there really were no tapes? No, it's all no, fake. Really. It's all there fake. Really Depends on how much history you follow. Cave, but not the caveman that they yeah. tell us about. People did live in caves. Though. What's that? David was a caveman. So ah, funny. funny. If they lived in the cave. If they lived in a cave, but it's not what you think. You go out west, the uh, western, the Indians in the out west, they lived in caves. They're not caves. They lived there. But it didn't mean they were devolved, devolved human beings. They were there you humans. go. Boom. Oh, I mean does that make sense now, Greg? Like they didn't Boom. Evolve. There you go. No. Kaboom. And that's that's the thing too, because remember. Yes. Uh, and one of the things the Smithsonian. So um, you can't if you, you can't make it something unless it's first created. To it's out of what of God creates that you make that something. In the land. So they found all the giant bones and. It's got like rid saying of them. you can't build a house it, without materials. Uh, right. Where would you get the materials from? Because where the giants okay. come from. So if man the creation is the materials. God the supplies it out of nothing, out of himself, so they were out of him directly. So Jewish, you know, man was created. Is a so thing. Yeah. So to your point, well, so I, I Sarai. Sarai was made. Because remember, it said that the she was made. She was made. She was made as as going back to Genesis. There were giants and men of the right line. 126, they, they mankind was made. So, so she was made that whole to theory. be Jewish? No, 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 no. No, in no, God's mind, long ago, she was going to be that way, but in time, she was just made, physically, physically, made. physically made. Yes. Physically. Then, then she was, then, then, then out of, then out of this, then out of that, she became Sarah. Pra. That's okay. what they're so That's out of the this, then God, the you got to this. This is interesting, the by the way. God did this backwards. You see, line. created, then made. Here it's made, then He creates. Is, uh, out of sense. nothing, mm -hmm. He creates. No God that did this. Out of universe and actually out of no out past, of mm -hmm. except That's for the fact that she herself is made. Mm -hmm. He creates well, her as a, he yeah. as a Hebrew. It'll throw you for a loop because. And then out of that Israelite. And out of that, Jewish. So that's that's the difference. What you're saying. So he can create out of out of something that's already there. He can create something new in your life. Because we are a one new man, for example. Perfect example of that. We're one new man. It didn't exist before. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing. Out of, it came out of. You could say out of nothing. Not it came out of God, who's Christ, God the Son, right? But. We did exist. The Jews did exist. We still existed. So technically, it's not created. You're kind of smearing the lines a little bit, but it's just to make it for your sake of it. You're, you're, this is actually tied into the one new man in Christ thing. So Sarai became Sarah, just like Jew and Gentile became in Christ. There's no distinction anymore. But that in Christ thing never existed. How could it if Christ wasn't here? He had to come here, live, die, rise from the dead. So this couldn't have come to pass. He couldn't have created a, a Jewish people that were first Israelites that were first Hebrew unless he changed what was made. He made her as Sarai. He changed her to Sarcha, and from that changed her timeline. So she was basically, she was Sarah. This was Sarai. She was going through her life, and God's going, you're not, you're not going to be Sarah from now on. So to your point, this was not the normal progression of her timeline. This was not. God deviated this. God made. She could on her own just do that. There's no way. She can't do that. So God had to God had to breathe their breath into her. The <sighs> so God created a new timeline for her, an alternate timeline. It would have been this way, and she would have stayed Sarah her whole life if God didn't intervene. To your point. So God, he, she was already made, but God created a new timeline. It didn't exist. To your point, that part didn't exist. So that was created, but it was already on the basis of what was made. Mm -hmm. So that that might make sense or not? Is that am I making sense, Todd? No, no, that's fine. So. I think the, the problem is that in Christian Christian law, everyone thinks that God created you know, everything. God created everything. We all like to have a kid. You have to eat that. I know, yeah, yeah. And you, don't, you don't see in the Bible where it says God created and made. Yeah. 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 I was in church every Sunday. Remember that? That's why I heard this. No, that's true. God created. Did you ever hear about They even call him the creator. They even yeah. say that. They don't say he's the creator and maker. Right. Yeah, maybe but he is the creator and maker. He's both. They never yeah. talked about it. maker. Talk about that all the time. No, no. no, because 
<laughs> He's like, I have. Because they didn't see it. They were just they didn't see it. Yeah, they didn't they see didn't it. They didn't see it. They just didn't know. They just didn't know. Mm-hmm. They saw it, but didn't understand it, so couldn't teach it. Or yeah. Or even the Canaanite. Yeah. And there's one guy who who he he teaches on. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if one of you guys shared it with me or I saw it myself. I don't know, but a guy teaches about the people that believe like us, like me, about the the gap in Genesis one and one and two, and said if you believe that, then it's inherently evil. And I'm like, whoa, stop. What's this all about? And then he goes into this whole rant about how he's attacking people that I'm against as well. Like you talked about the dinosaurs being beforehand, which then puts cavemen, which then puts man, which then makes no sense, which then it doesn't make any sense. So then he starts to have it all fall apart and say that doesn't make any sense. And so he he just thinks that everybody who th- believes there's a gap, therefore, ergo, believes in the same erroneous thinking he's been surrounded by. But that's not true. It's just like as soon as you say there's more than one salvation, they go, ooh, that must be evil because they're not used to it. It's, it. Therefore, it's wrong. doesn't mean it's wrong. It's because it's different. <laughs> you know, it's different. They think it's wrong because they don't never heard it before. And that's why I gave all the scriptures to you, so you look up for yourself. And that's why I gave the basic premise of ones without works and ones with works, and they both use their salvation. Ones without blood covenant, ones with blood testament, they both they have a salvation. So you can say what you want to say, but does it? that's in the scripture. It doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is what are you going to do with that? <laughs> you, know, you just can't like say, oh, it's all the same to me. Fine, at least you're honest. But don't tell me I'm, I'm, not, I'm not just making stuff up. I'm just, I'm just categorizing it differently. And some people just don't want to do that. I think it's just too much work for them. That's what it is. It's like we, we talked earlier about about you know careers, making money, or whatever, or whatever doing taxes. You, they don't they don't want this, thing, this this what you do that right. They don't we don't want to do it as people. Let's face it. What you do is not normal for people to like doing what you do. So <laughs> so no one wants to do that on their own. They want you to do it. So I just most people when it comes to spiritual matters don't want to put forth the effort to figure out all the details and all the spirit code of how to know what's deducted and what counts and what doesn't count. You know, they're like, oh my God. The difference in, but the difference in the tax code, it changes all the time. All these addendums and amendments and all that garbage. Then there's the moving scale of within what isn't that's gonna change. And, but on this, there's no changes. It's just so doggone deep and wide and long. And you're like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so that, that's the difference. <laughs> similar but different. Unchanging is where it's different, but in the depth of it and the width of it, it's where it's similar. No one wants to really put their head around it and be like, put my stamp on. I got it all finally figured out. Yeah, right. No, you don't. As soon as you do, something changes. <laughs> so anyway, so is that, y- you're cool? You just think you're back, right? Yeah. I just didn't know if you're okay. Sorry. I thought you had a question or if you had something you want to, okay. So good so far? I was looking at their phones. Is that, is confirmation's over? Oh, no. Okay. No. We never wanted to hear from God before. It's all done. It's all done. Gonna get tired of winning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So you're done. All right. So, so as I was gonna start off with the so the apostles. So they remind you of something here. So you have four guys. So you have four apostles that survived after A.D. 70, and that is Peter, Paul. Oh, not, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. What am I talking about? I have something different in my head I'm trying to point out. Sorry. There's John. There's John, Matthew, Thomas, and Philip. But then over here, sorry, I was, I was doing something else in my head. Sorry. There's also, I'm going to put it over here. And there's also three apostles who are type of the friend. And that's, this is what I was talking about earlier. This is Peter, Paul, and John. So, Just kidding. No, I'm just kidding. I'm joking. 
So I want you to, when you go to um, when you look at these four apostles that were and the reference to the four waves, they represent the four people that are going to be in the waves, yeah. just so you know. Mm. So, no, so, <laughs> no, you don't. well, it's so John, if you still figure this out yourself, you just think about it, right? So John couldn't be killed. The other ones could. So, and he lived the longest. So who's that remind you of? Of the four waves, he has to be a hundred fruit, the sixty to thirty, or the other hundred fruit that lived through tribulation. He became part of the bride, but he's part of the soon medical age because he couldn't be killed. Remember, they can't be harmed. Just like the hundred forty-four thousand faithful soon medical who became part of the bride. Remember that. So they're part of the bride. They're, they're both hundred hundred fruit. They're just on the back end instead of the front end, but they couldn't be killed. So he's this. He's this type. This guy here, he's a type of, of that uh, soon medical the 144,000 people. So remember when John was exiled to an island. Remember that too. The 144,000 soon medical will be exiled, if you will, themselves. They won't, they'll be hunted down. They're hated by Satan. They're not, they're going to be earmarked and, 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 and hunted down. But the interesting part is, again, that he was also the beloved. Not only did he die a natural death, couldn't be <coughs> killed, bless you. But he's also, he's also um, a beloved one who was in charge of Mary, the mother of our Lord. So he's in charge, just like he had a responsibility charged to him directly. <coughs> bless you again. That's directly a physical charge that was of the law's responsibility to Yeshua to take care of his mom. And he gave that charge to John. So he gave a spiritual charge to all of them, but he gave him an extra charge of a physical law-abiding reality that the son had to take care of the mom when dad's gone as the oldest. So he gave that to John. So what that speaks to is 144,000 were in charge of the responsibility of giving the word of God and care of the word of God of the kingdom to those others during tribulation, such a horrible, horrific time. He had to, they had to give him they had to give that charge. So that's, that's him. Matthew, Matthew is that, is the hunter fruit person. He's the guy, that, by the way, he was very wealthy. He was also well educated. He also, he also wrote in Hebrew and Greek in his, in, his, in, his, uh, New in his New Testament gospel account. And, and he was the first one whose gospel was written. And it was obviously the one used uh, in the early congregation. And that's on your, that's on that chart I gave you, but so he's, he's the type of that hunter fruit person. So that's where he fits in. So he, so, he, so John represents the wave number four. He represents the wave number one, and this is two, and this is three. I just put John first, sorry about that. I should have put him in order, but my apology. I can't help myself, because of these guys, John is by far the one that's the most yeah, what does that mean? It, he wrote his gospel in eighty four. It's on this chart oh, here. The first two yeah. Gospel, yeah. Yeah. So Mark's gospel was written around eighty fifty. Um, let me see here. Eighty fifty eight. I think it was. Uh, Luke's was written around eighty sixty. And then, so he of all the gospels written, Matthew wrote, wrote 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 the first one. So Mark and Luke and John wrote their gospels after Matthew. Matthew was the first one to write it. It was actually said Nathaniel walked around with his so much because it was the one written that you could you had to walk around with. The other words didn't write theirs till later. So, so did he wrote them in Greek? He wrote it in both. Yes, yes he wrote it in both so Hebrew and Greek. Yes there is. Okay. Yes there is. There if you look it up you'll find it. It's a, it is evidence of him him he wrote, he's the only gospel writer to do that though. Okay. People take that and say, oh all of them did that. No 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 yeah. The brother was educated, so he did that. Okay, give me a break. Okay, that's just him. He said he could go to the Sons of an Abundant Father, and they could come to Israel, and they are all of those things. There is a. It was originally written in 
Yeah, there is a New Testament in Hebrew, and people look at that as like the Katzmiel, and it, so that to me is no different than the Septuagint. So you took you took a Hebrew Hebraic writing and turned it into Greek, which has more context. But then you're doing the same thing, but differently. You're taking the original writing of Koine Greek and putting it into Hebrew because it's more expressive. But that wasn't the, that wasn't the original writing it was written in. So you can't. But it was. His was. His was. His written in both. His was though. That's the only one we have to be true. That's correct. He did. So then in Thomas, what you're going to find in Thomas was, Thomas he actually built. He built seven churches. Seven. Of all the apostles, none are mentioned building churches. None, that's correct. None were mentioned building churches, but he was. So he is a person who builds constantly. How far is Greek from India? How far is India from Jerusalem? That's far. It's on the map. He wasn't even traveling there. But he went to. India then was different than India today. He was all through. What's that? Yeah, they probably talk like this though there too, I'm sure. <laughs> you have a savior that looks like Aussie Brown? <laughs> this savior is like Aussie Brown, white is brown. That's not good, the savior. <laughs> Did he want some curry? Oh, there it is. I'm going to say, where's the map? It's not going to be on the map, I don't think, Brother Todd. This only covers the modern-day land of Israel, and I think there's only one. There's one with a bigger map, I think, but I think that's the front. No. No, sorry. The biggest one you get is this one here or that one there, which is really similar. They don't, India's over there, so. Sorry, it's off the map, off the grid, man. So if you want to do, do a, if you want to, that's 500 miles, or no, 300 miles. That's a, that's so here, because Jesus said God. <laughs> but by the way, all the apostles went different. We're going to cover that in a minute. It's on this chart. They all went different places, though. Not all of them, but a lot of them went to Turkey. So you'll find R southern Russia, Iraq, India, Sri Lanka, all kinds of funky places they went. Syria. I think. So. So that's on here. I think I think Egypt is one. China, I don't know for sure. I can't remember offhand. It's Africa. E yep. China. Yeah, it's China. Thank you. It's Thomas of China. See, boom. He's reading. <laughs> I couldn't remember. I know it was on there. All right, so he built seven churches. And remember, the churches are, are the ones that are are built built up ones. So he's that 60 fruit person. And then Philip, by the way, is the first one. He's the first of the apostles, believe it or not. He was the fourth one that was, the, that was called an apostle. But he was the one who actually was the first one Jesus said. He was number one where Jesus actually said, follow me. The other ones just followed. He's the first one to hear those words which is evidenced of what somebody has when they hear about 30 fruits. No one, no one can convince you other than you have to hear it from God yourself to follow him. Because you can hear all you want to hear. Until you actually yourself get convinced by God, you're not going to walk down that path of these mysteries being unfolded to you. So the initial follow me, or the initial, this speaks to the initial dianea. Oh, let me, I don't want to spell the wrong word. I can't even. Oh, yeah, because it's Christian, yeah. Am I spelling that word right? I can't even spell the word right. My mind's going blank. How do you spell Diania again? D -I -O. <laughs> D thank you, D-I-N-O. <laughs> thank you. N-E-A? Or I-A? I don't even know. I don't know. Anyways, I, I'm, losing, I'm losing my mind. Okay. Is it E-A? Well, if you have it right, it's one. Okay, boom. Which is this, which is this foundational... So he was, he was the first one to hear that. So if you look on this, just I know we're going to late on time. probably getting tired. You guys tell me when you want to stop. I'm just going to go until you say, okay, we're done, dude. Are you okay. still doing speaking and lecturing? Hold on. Are you still doing that? As long as you guys want me to. That's and what Lord I'm saying. Oh. Yes, I've been doing that. Oh. Oh, Lord, I'm not. Yeah, well, 
That's on. That's you guys. You guys tell me what do you think? What time of highlight you want to go till today? Ready, do you want? Do you want to go till eight? I have some more. I have a whole, I have a whole bunch of them. Oh, bring it up. Bring it up. You know, while we're here, let's make sure all the sun shines. Let's say eight. <laughs> let's say say eight. Let's say eight. That's a good time. Okay. Uh, so on the so on the chart, so on this chart, what you'll find is, mm -hmm. is that these numbers in blue. If you want to know what the numbers in blue are, the numbers in blue represent the order in which they were added to the list. That's the order in which they became an apostle. So John was the first one. Andrew was the second one. Peter was the third one. If you remember, John was there when John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. I count him as number one, even though Andrew was there too. He was with him because you can tell that he was closer to Jesus because, one, Jesus called him the beloved one. He was always there uh, next to him in the Last Supper. He was letting his hand on his... Well, he John the Baptist. The he did, but John was there also, I'm saying. John was there following John the Baptist. So was Andrew. Yeah, they were following him as Jews. They, leave, they believed in his message, yeah. yeah. So John was the one I put first before Andrew. Now they're both there because, because John is the one who was, again, beloved by Jesus, always seemed to be close to him, and was also the one that also ran first to the tomb. So he seems to always be the one who was closest in a kinship to Jesus. So I put him first. Then Andrew second. Andrew then tells his brother Peter, mm -hmm. so he's third. And then you have Philip is, is, is actually, excuse me, uh, James is fourth, excuse me. James is fourth because it says uh, what happened then is they were on a boat, uh, Peter, James, and John, and then he calls out James with his brother and with Peter and Andrew, which is rather interesting because when Andrew, the brother, finds about Jesus, he tells Peter right away, same, same day. Whereas with John, he doesn't go tell his brother, which tells me they weren't as close. I mean, think about that. I mean, I have seven brothers, so I can tell you, if you don't tell somebody right away, it's probably because you're not as close. I'm just saying. Because when you're close, you, you're more instantaneously sharing things. No shot, I'm just saying. I think it's because their mentality was different. You know, James was more like, go get him, and he was the older one, and John was the younger one. So anyway, and then the fifth one called was Philip, and he was the first one called by, uh, again, said, follow me by Jesus. Philip then brought Nathaniel. He brought up Jesus to Nathaniel, but and then Jesus came unto him. And then the seventh one was Matthew, when Jesus came across him being a tax collector. The eighth one was James of Alphaeus, because he's the brother of Matthew. And the ninth one was Thomas, because he was nominated by Philip. The tenth one was Judas, because he was nominated by Bartholomew, which is kind of interesting, or vouched for. And the last two are because <coughs> you have Simon the Canaanite, who is more than likely, people say, the father of Judas, and then Jude Thaddeus Labius is just laugh because that's what he said. <laughs> so, so if that makes sense, you can see. You with me? You okay? Okay. So. <laughs> so, you're so funny. You're so copious. You said Judas so. was. Brought in by Bartholomew? Yeah, believe it or not. You believe I that? I didn't know that. It's not in here. But I'll That's crazy. It. No, it's in there. Yeah. It's in there under under um, under under Nathaniel. He vouched for Judas. Oh. He vouched okay. for the character of Judas, believe okay. it or not. Okay. He said, I like this dude. I bet you now he's probably thinking, oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, You're I did it wrong. Simon the Zealot was Judas' father? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked, I'll tell you, you know why I think that? Do you know why that is? No. Okay, so here, let me tell you. Let me show you why. I'll tell you why. Here. Here, I'll show you. Go to John. Uh, John the Revelator. Not that one, though. So. I have to find it now. Bada boom. Sada boom. Okay. Uh, dun, 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 okay. So in John chapter twelve, when he six days before the Passover came to Bethany, it's verse one, and he was Lazarus was with Jesus. It was he, he raised from the dead. 
And they made him therefore a supper there, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of those reclining with him. Then Mary, having taken a pound of balsam of genuine spikenard, very costly, anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the balsam. And one of his disciples, that is the chariot he was about to betray him, says, why was not this balsam sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? So, the, the, yep, so the left side of your margin, you read the right left side of your margin, you'll read where he says in John 12 and verse uh, 4, it says, says, therefore, one out of the disciples of him, Judas of Simon and Caria. You see? So when it says that Judas was out of Simon, you're like, say what? As in Simon is a chariot, Simon the Zealot. He's called both, by the way. Is a chariot, Simon the Zealot, Simon the Canaanite. So that's where you get that from. So people think, well, he's the he's the son of Simon, which would make a lot of sense because well, Simon the Zealot was an activist. He had a so sword on him, by the way. Older. Yes, because there was an age range. If you remember, John was young. That's why he didn't want to speak up more than likely to his brother. Whereas Andrew had no problem with that. They weren't as far in age apart. It means that John and James were a little more years apart than Andrew and Peter were, I would think. They weren't as close, probably because of that. But the reality is that with with Simon the Canaanite, it's interesting. So you think about this. So that means, so that means of all the apostles, if you think about this, you got brothers all over the place. Yeah. You got you got Peter and Andrew. No, you do. You got Peter and Andrew, right? And you got James and John. And you got Matthew and Bartholomew. I mean Matthew, not Bartholomew. Matthew and uh, James of Alphaeus, those all three, those or half of them are brothers right there. And then you have the other guys. Let me see who else we have. So you have Simon, who just mentioned here, Simon the, Zachari Simon the Zealot, and Judas are possibly, you know, related. I can only say that definitively, but it looks like they are to me. And then you have, let me see who else is. Um, the other ones aren't related. That's it. Matthew, huh? Matthew and James of Alphaeus. Yeah, because because Matthew was of Alphaeus, and they, that's why they say James of Alphaeus, because he was the less. That's why it's called James the Lesser. They say because he was lesser of his brother and of James, the brother of Jesus, and of James. There's another James, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So, so this is the. So you have one of the of the six or the twelve. Excuse me. You have uh, two, four, six, eight of them right there. And the other ones that are not, yeah, Philip, Bartholomew, and uh, uh, Thomas, and uh, Jude that are not related to each other. Hmm. Rather interesting. Yeah? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought you had a question. So it's just kind of interesting how you see a lot of uh, brotherhood there. It's kind of, all right, so anyway. Why are they not on the left side? Okay, because some is from, yeah, your point about the different names is because some of the he Hebraic way, they spoke in Aramaic, which is an old Hebrew uh, usage of being modernized. So some was old Hebrew, some was Aramaic, newer Hebrew, some was said in the Koine Greek, because remember they're living in a mixed society of old school Hebrew, middle, middle of the road, modern Hebrew, you got <coughs> Jewish people, gen Gentile folks speaking the, gen the Greek stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why different names. Just like you had different names of the calendars of the month for Jewish people too. That's on that agricultural chart. You have different names for the same month. It's the same reason because of different viewpoint of what the culture is imposing. Yeah, I always was under the impression that Simon Iscariot and Judas were the same people. Did I get that? No, no, no. <laughs> but you have Simon the Canaanite, who's also called Simon the Zealot, Simon the Iscariot. Simon he's called that. Judas of Simon the Iscariot. Yeah, or out of yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. When you say that, you look on your left side yeah. when he says that. It's it's I see a Jewish yeah. Simon but it's out that? of it's out of see one out of the disciples of him. Mm -hmm. You look at the echo over here. Right. Out of. Yeah. So it's just interesting that his relationship. I mean, why would okay. they? I don't understand why they were translating that too to the staff. I know that's what I, that, and that weird is true, right? Yeah. That, that you're translating left out the word Simon totally. Because it's like why'd you leave it out, man? Every time they tell that story, it's either Judas or the Canaanite or half of them. It's no. like the story about the woman at the washing oh. machine. Yeah. It's like they all yeah, it says, and that is the carriot. Yeah. yeah, it says, and that is the carriot said that, but it wasn't. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, did you say, what did you say? Yeah. Every time they tell you this, when the story yes. is retold yes. in the church, yes. they always say Simon. 
I mean, it doesn't say this is uh, Judas. Judas, but it is. Judas is it, it, it is Judas, but, but he's supposed to be Judas, the son of. I mean, you're right, Simon. Judas, son of Simon. Son of Simon. They leave that. Part. They leave that part out. He's, you were saying before, it's not like you were saying it wasn't Judas who said it. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, that's said why it's been stopped. Saying they, that's they right. leave out the fact that it was Judas. He was the son of Simon. Son of Simon. Yeah. Yeah, and by the way, Simon Zealot, if you remember, was the one in Luke. If you remember, if you go back to Luke, when Jesus said, "Take, don't take a so in Luke chapter ten, I think it's chapter ten. Well, he's talking about don't take a, a sword. Uh, sorry, my neck. Yes, yeah, so it is. See, see, and here in the New King James Version, in John 12, verse 4, but one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, who Boom. Was betrayed. Boom. So, yeah, so it does say, yeah. yeah. It says it. Yeah. What was that? This is a What's the translation was that? What we're looking at, John 12, verse 4. It's the same script verse, it's just it's different. Same, I'm looking at it in a different translation. But there was, there was that passage in when Jesus said, don't take the sword, take a sword with you. He was talking in, in the aspect of Simon the Zealot had a sword. There's a scripture where he says, don't take, take a sword with you. You remember that's in Luke, I believe it was. I can't remember where it's at right now. When Jesus is talking about, don't take, a, don't take another, don't take an extra purse, but if you have a sword, take it with you. Yeah, people use it, people use it to act like, okay, I'm supposed to bear, bear arms or have a oh, gun. Don't take a sword with you. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. They use it as a reason to say, it's okay to be armed. That's funny. That's funny. That's funny. I got you. That's funny. But but the point is that, that Simon was known for carrying a, a little dagger why, on him. Why was he called the Zealot? Because Simon was an activist. He wanted to overthrow the Romans. Oh. And that's why he carried a sword on him, a dagger. Very well known in, in those days. Jews wanted to just come up on Romans. And you know, they're saying, oh, I didn't do it. I don't know how I thought about it. <laughs> well, you can't just do that because then they start killing people until you tell them who do did it. Then you don't want your dad and mom and kid to be dead. So they're like, he did it. And that's how they find out. They just start killing people until you say it's me. So he would just, you know, he would do that. He would like to kill people. So, but he didn't do that when he was with Jesus, but he still held on to his dagger, which is interesting. So he kind of held on to his little, you know, his zealousness, which is how you can see how it affected Judas, I would think, which ties in their relationship kind of to me more, more exactly, which is why he was called a zealot. But anyways, I digress. The four, the four apostles survived after AD 70 were these That's four. Oh, yeah. Apostles, yep. They were all zealous. You would think so, right? Plus, I mean, James didn't help any being all, you know, kind of boisterous. Yeah. James was kind of, of all the ones, of the, if you look at all the ones who were the most fit, it was James. He was kind of ripped, and he was all boisterous. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, he's ripped. All righty, then. Wow. He's ripped. She's like, she's like, wow, wow. He he was her gun smoke. <laughs> He's your Matt Dillon. Well, yeah, James is fisherman. Yeah, man. Fine. So, of the other three apostles who were a type of the friend, you remember this just goes back. Uh, so Peter was the he, he sowed the first portion of sperma one, then Paul sowed the second portion of sperma one, and he did sperma two. And then you have John, who did Revelation, as we know. But if you think about these, these three, like I mentioned before earlier, so he actually started, God started with the, with, if you will, he was unveiling the, like the, heavenly, the heavenly deeper truths, if you will. It started with Peter. And Paul finished it, writing about it. He, they, they, they pretty much had it all laid out. And then John just, he just, John expounds on, on continuing what it's going to look like. As what, that's what the apocalypse means, the revealing. He's revealing what it's going to look like. So he told you what it was. He finished telling you what it was. I'm not telling you what that looks like. <laughs> You're like, wow. So those three guys are pretty, 
pretty awesome. But so what I did is I took kind of a fun, I think a fun little journey lane, I thought was kind of, so I, I, I wrote it to before I told you that of all the books written in the scripture, that these guys wrote the bulk of them, of the New Testament. So there's 27 books written, and Peter, so Peter wrote two books, and then Paul wrote 13 books, and then John wrote five books. So again, what a coincidence. Of the 12 apostles, three of them wrote 20 of the 27 books in the New Testament. That's a lot. <laughs> you think about that. That was a lot. Well, Paul's the one, and out of Paul, you had Luke, who was influenced by him. He wrote two more, which is Acts and Luke. And then Paul and Peter both influenced Mark because Mark was Peter's scribe, but Paul worked with him on a journey, and he wrote the book of Mark. So there's another one. So they were a part of, they played a, so Paul played a part, you could argue, in 16 books, and Peter played a part in an extra one, so three. So if you count all those, that's 22, 23, and only four left. Of the four that's left, you have, you have James and Jude, which are both half-brothers of Jesus. They wrote, they wrote two books. They wrote one each. So you, and you got 23, 25, you only have two left. And you got Hebrews. And Matthew. And Matthew was an apostle. That's pretty much a done deal, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have Hebrews is written by, we don't know, but either Paul, Priscilla, Aquila, or Apollos, or a combination. Maybe the answer to it all, maybe it's all that of them. Jesus. That's Paul. Yeah, Paul. Paul. Paul wrote 13. So, so Paul had a part to play in this too. Paul influenced this book too, I would say. Paul influenced Hebrews also. So if you think about it, Paul wrote 13, influenced two in Luke, one in Mark, and he influenced Hebrews. 17. 17 in all. So 17 of the 27 came, came from Paul directly or indirectly. Kind of a big deal. <laughs> I'm just saying. And then two by Peter, and then and John had five. But outside of Paul, you can see John's the second one. Right? So, but that being said, what's interesting I just want to bring out is of all the apostles, people always think that the apostles wrote the Gospels. The, the, no, <laughs> bless you. Wow. But it's interesting of the of the, of the apostles, they don't even think about the fact that only three of them wrote books, <laughs> or four of them. Excuse me, four of them of the three that follow Jesus, three of them, three that follow Jesus wrote books. So how how pretty how pretty sad. The ones who follow Jesus firsthand to see him go through his trauma and his ups and Paul wrote that. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Timothy. It's written to him. Oh, all right. It's written Titus to him. <laughs> Unless you're thinking, oh, I got you. You're thinking of the book Timothy. Timothy is written by Paul. Timothy, maybe by somebody. I'm just kidding. They couldn't write. Some people think that, actually. Some think. That's over here. Yep. Italy. Right here. Yep. Like, I wonder if they would have known of it had they. Well, sure. Paul and Paul Peter, Peter died Peter. in Rome. Well, it was AD 79. Yeah, but it was 10 years before they died in Rome. Didn't like they weren't. They weren't I mean, Luke was going to, to Rome to get information. He was doing like Mark was scribing for Peter and Luke was scribing for Paul. So you would think they knew them. Well, they were, you know. They were like, they were scribing, you know, like. In AD 60, no. I know, but you're asking where they were at Pompeii. I would no, say no, no. I mean in order to get there, they have to go through the port. So no, when it actually happened, were they, were they there? well, I would. Uh, I, so to your point, AD 79, that goes back to who was alive. So you would, to your to your point, no, none of them would have known about that except for Philip and John. That's it. That's what I'm asking. Yeah, they were all dead. No, only Philip, only Philip and John would have known. Correct. I would think so because it would have got to the empire. I would think it would have been. I would. It was a kind of a big event. Mm -hmm. So we're having jokes always. Right? <laughs> we're having jokes. <laughs> I do something wrong. Oh. oh, okay, okay. But so it's only those two.
Just eat them. They're all mixed in. Just eat them. We figured them out. We can identify Just eat them. That's the fun of it. Just eat it, baby. No, no, and then also he. <laughs> yeah, he and he put his hand in his head. Yeah, he is in his hole. Yeah, he is. He is. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we're not doing that. Bad. Okay. I didn't see you. That's his second hole. We should. You know, he's like, I like that. Babe, I told you not to mix them. No, I like mixing them for that reason. The little tiny ones are the little crispy ones. I know. I know. <laughs> he's like, I know. We're trying to get nuts. I'm looking for the peanuts in there. <laughs> Good luck with that. All right, anyway. Okay. You're so funny. All right, so, so as I go through this right here, I'm going to go back to. Uh, so when I, when I started to do this, I started to think about people in the Old Testament who wrote the most amount of books in the Old Testament, right? So I started thinking about Moses. And then he wrote the five books of the Pentateuch. Mm -hmm. Then he also wrote one psalm. So he wrote six. And then I thought, okay, well then that's not a, that's that's kind of cool. But then David, <laughs> the brother wrote eighty six psalms. But we call it the Book of Psalms. But let's get real; they're all individual books. Mm -hmm. He wrote individual psalms. So you got to count each one individually. That's why I'm counting Moses as six. It's psalm ninety. It's a psalm by itself. So David had eighty six of those bad boys. And then you go over to. And you go to Solomon. Solomon wrote Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, and he wrote three psalms. I'm like, what? I didn't know that. Or three or two, was yeah, it? Yeah. it was two. Was it three? No, three, no, two psalms, two. So he wrote five. One was the one about his wife, right? Two he writes, he, that's a proverb. Oh, that's a proverb, yeah, sorry. Oh. He wrote Proverbs, two, sorry, six. Yeah, it's three. Wait, did I say that? I say Proverbs? Proverbs, Proverbs. Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes. Oh, but I'm not counting Proverbs as individual ones. They're all him. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. So that's 31 Proverbs. Thank you very much. So 31 Proverbs. That's what you're saying. My apologies. Mm -hmm. 31 Proverbs plus, plus Song of Solomon mm -hmm. plus Ecclesiastes. So that's 31, 2, 3, plus he wrote two Psalms. That's 35. That's a lot. But he wrote why don't you break it down the same way for the other? You do the same one. No, no, no. Song of Solomon is one. Yeah. Over here, for Peter. Just say Song of Solomon was one, what do you mean? one book. Are you talking about the New Testament? What did I do Testament. wrong? What did I do? Wait, wait, wait. Oh. What? Are you talking about the New Testament first? Yes. Because yes. those aren't individual books in the New Testament. Those are in, there's not, that's right, it's one letter. They're, they're different letters. Each oh. Psalm's individual is an individual yeah, song. We see it broken up into chapters. But it's one letter. Okay. I but see. the Psalm, the Psalm is actually individual, 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 individual praises. Letter. They're individual praises that they call it. It's like a songbook. Song it's song a songbook. That's one song. That's one. That's one yeah. letter. Okay. Yeah. So, so the Song we, of we Solomon. See chapter, but it's one. One letter. Song of Solomon is one letter. No. But the Psalms are all different letters. That's why they're called Psalms. Each one is a different, separate, stands alone, stands alone, stands alone. Okay. And interesting enough, Psalm one, the most popular. Yeah. No one knows who wrote it. <laughs> well, that's What's that all about? David did. Psalm 119, no. Oh, 119? Psalm one, no, that one too. They I, I, wrote, I, wrote this, I, just, I wrote this all down. They, they don't know who wrote that one. Isn't that crazy? The two most popular psalms of all time. They're like, it's David. Prove it. No one did. That one? No, that's the Psalm 46. And the, no, no. The, the Psalm 119 is the one where he says, the, the word lends to my feet, lends to my path. And, the, and that word I put in my heart, I won't sin against you. That's oh, Psalm 119. Oh, oh, the 119 one. Yeah. That's the longest song. It's, it's the middle of the Bible. Middle, yeah. It's in the, in the middle. middle. It's the very middle, longest one. No one knows who wrote it. Okay. That's right. What's up with that? It's all the Hebrew letters. Yeah, it doesn't. Well, they say, yeah, it has all the different, has uniqueness of Hebrew letters, the middle of the Bible. It has all the different quotes, and no one has attributed oh. the direct authorship or direct writing, I should say. The author is God, but what's that? How did that came then? Because it never. They were written by different people, probably. Because yeah. they. Because they attributed, like the canonization, remember, in the Old Testament mm -hmm. was not the same as the New Testament. That's a good question you're asking. Mm -hmm. The New Testament canonization took place in contrast to the Old Testament. So what was already accepted was accepted and not questioned. So the real question is why not canonization, but how was it accepted as part of God's inspiration originally from the Old Testament prophets and, and, and those men back then mm -hmm. who accepted it then? They took it as, and obviously had to come from somebody they knew directly 
had spoken with God or God spoke with them or okay. both. So I don't know who that was. That's the irony to your question. Mm -hmm. There had to be a direct correlation. They, don't let it, they didn't let it be taken in as, as, as scripture mm -hmm. unless they knew. Mm -hmm. That's what they based the new testament on. These guys knew for certain. How are we going to just use their rule of thumb? So the real question isn't canonization. It's just how did they do that? Who was those? How did they do that without knowing the people who they were? Mm -hmm. Or they just not write it down, okay. which is what it looks like. They didn't write it down. Yeah. There's no record of who did it, which I think okay. is kind of interesting. Then but the, the apocryphal books, isn't that the same that's thing garbage. Moses? Oh, no. no, Moses. I don't, I don't think so. Who did they attribute those books? To? I don't know. I didn't look it up because I'm not. It's history. It's not. Yeah, it's historical. It's not scriptural. Okay. Okay. To me, it's like the Book of Jasher and yeah, Enoch. Yeah, yeah. There are. I. I just don't. They're not scriptures to me. They're just history. <laughs> it's all right. It's okay. The Book of Thomas, the Gospel of Thomas. That's fine. The Gospel of Judas. That's fine. The Gospel of Mary Magdalene. That's fine. But it's history. It's not scripture. Yeah. It's. I don't. I don't get involved in. That's just me. So. So. So he has. Yeah, I know. So what's the other one I was going to tell you? So I don't know. Oh, oh, and then Jeremiah, believe it or not, my pen just wore out because I had it open the whole time. Jeremiah actually, believe I didn't know this. He actually wrote two. He wrote three books because he actually wrote um, a psalm to David. I didn't know that. He dedicated a psalm to David. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, psalm 137. So he wrote Jeremiah, he wrote Lamentations, and he wrote Psalm to David. So he wrote three. So it's just, I'm just showing you these things. So then you go over to, uh, where's the other one here? I want to show you. What's the other one? Okay, so the other Psalms here, just so you know. So there's 11 that were written by the sons of Korah. 11, the uh, sons of Korah wrote 11. How do I know that? Your step two agent will tell you. Yeah, watch. Let me show you. I'll tell you. I'll, sh I'll show it to you. And you look it up on, look, look at the top right there. See the top? It says Psalm of David. Psalm of Jeremiah. For David. See? I didn't write it. See? It's okay. Psalm 137. I didn't write it. It's in the book. Psalm 137. It's in your step two agent. Remember, step two agent is good for context. Great example where context is huge because otherwise I wouldn't have known. You look online, they won't tell you. You go to a regular scriptural Bible, they won't tell you. But the Septuagint has more context in it. So for, it's not word study, it's just context, which is who wrote it. It comes so it's in handy. By Jeremiah to David? Yeah, isn't that great? So it's he awesome. Was alive at the same time. Well, he was alive afterwards. He was written on behalf of, like, a, like a, not, not to him directly, he was already in this about case, him. No okay. Yeah, like an ode to David kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and like in remembrance of him, to your point. Good good point. Thank you for saying that. Like an ode to David, yeah. He was thinking about him and when he wrote this. It's, just, it's a short psalm. And by the way, interesting, I said ode to David. In verse 3, it said, sing, us, sing for us some of the odes of Zion. It says it right there. So I didn't even. So anyway. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? So, so my point, so if you look at these, these different men, these are the guys that wrote the, 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 the dominant, the son, Korah wrote, they wrote 11, 11 songs. What's that? Well, we're looking at the editors of this Bible. And we're oh, it's called that. Church, the book of so. Yeah, I know. I was just being funny. Don't be so Actually, I wrote these. Natural sky theory. Natural um, sky? Natural sky theory. Mm -hmm. On Twitter, everywhere, people mm -hmm. are all mocking Christians to say, mm -hmm. somebody sing natural sky theory. Oh, well, that's too bad. You, that you, you really, really know, right? Really it's really, really mean. mean. That's what I need to hear. Yeah. All the Taylor Swift fans. Yeah. Well, wait at you when mm -hmm. we go to heaven. <laughs> So the point I wanted to bring out to you is just, it's just interesting that you have these guys here writing dominantly the New Testament, but of the Old Testament, 39 books, six written by Moses. I say 35, but you're counting Psalms as a book. 
but there's multiple books in it. But if you would count it, if you count the books of the Old Testament, 39, and you look back and reread this, of the Psalms, 11 written by Sons of Korah, 12 written by Asaph. By the way, Sons of Korah, remember him? The one who rebelled against Aaron? Yes. Mm-hmm. It's kind of yeah. 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 great. His sons wrote a book yeah, Psalms. It's kind of crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like they were like in remorse. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And then Asaph was a musician for David. Yeah. He, wrote, he wrote 12 yeah. Psalms. And then Agias and Zechariah were like, Zechariah is in the prophet. They wrote three Psalms. And so it's interesting. And then Jeremiah wrote one. Solomon wrote the one. And David wrote 86. What's that? I have the, this version doesn't give me the original. Who wrote it? But if you, if you do the math on this, there's 150 Psalms. By the way, you'll love this. There's 151st Psalm that's actually in the Septuagint. It's not in the regular Psalms. It's a Psalm of David. He wrote it, which is part of the 86. And he wrote it about his reflections on how God delivered Goliath in his hands. And he says he chopped his head off. I'm like, okay. okay. <laughs> so he kind of talks about that. Yeah, it's cool. You, you have a Septuagint? Yeah. Well, I, I have it at home. Psalm 151, you'll read it. That's pretty cool. I'll read it to you. It's pretty cool. Yeah. 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 That's a good question. So, okay, let's, okay. Yeah, if you go to, let's go, let's let's read your number 16 that you're talking about. That's where that is. That's why I was wondering about the lion. Well, half I don't know about that part. I, I, but I knew, I knew this for a fact that the, the, the stone didn't kill him. No. It was mm-hmm. the fact he had chopped his head off. People always mm-hmm. think he was knocked. He was killed by a stone. A stone. Just knocked him out. Mm-hmm. But here's the real weird. By the way, <laughs> Here, here's the weird thing. By the way, by the way, wait a second, wait a second. For, for, wait a second. For for a word for an actual word illustration, excuse me, but Goliath's like a 14 foot tall being. His sword's like this. Really? How's a guy who's 12 years old? <laughs> it gotta be like, it weighs like how much? <laughs> like how much does it weigh? Yeah. Like a 200 pounds, he's going. <laughs> and they get the torque, lift up is one thing. They get the torque on it to cut through. What's he doing like the Muslim? <laughs> There's no way he's doing that, right? You see what I'm saying? So think about the supernatural strength God had to give him. He had that supernatural strength, right? You know, I always wondered how he picked, he couldn't wear he the had armor. To. No, you see what I'm saying? He tells you how big it was. Armor, yeah. could pick up the lion's sword. So he couldn't have a, it's a so think about that. If the armor of a regular man and Saul who was around, Saul was about seven foot. He was, he was a big dude, it was said. Six and give him, we'll give him six, 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 seven, big dude. Because of what they had on and everything, they'll probably say seven, they round off, okay, fine. People say that. But the dude was big. So he could he they, that that swam on him. That's a regular man's sword. He couldn't wield that. He couldn't He's gonna take a guy twice his size, literally, and go, no problem. Roar. God just seriously just emboldened him with power to do that. that? Yeah. It must look it's funny like as it must look like funny as all get out. There's a sword like twice his size. He's going. They're going. Is that a dude? <laughs> I mean, <he's> just <laughs> chopped. They're like, what is that? An ant? I mean, he's just like. Mm-hmm. I bet from their angle, it was just a sword moving with no one. I mean, it's just to me, it's amazing. Yeah, I think it was. Picked up, he picked up his head. He picked up his head. I know it's crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. It's just amazing to me. Anyway. So anyway, so to Delaney's point about the, you want to go back to the Sons of Korah yeah, thing. She's carrying, she's carrying the legs. Legs. What's that? All his company, yeah. Not all his sons. Remember, because remember, remember this. So when you say the sons, I wanted to see where it said sons. I don't remember it saying sons. But I do remember this. Remember what God did say about the age of accountability, which people use it incorrectly. Age of accountability does not mean those who don't know who Jesus is. It means those who don't, who do know who Jesus is, who, or in this case, know what the covenant is. You're not accountable until you're independent on your own, which is post-20. So if you're under 20, you're not accountable. But when you're under 20, you're accountable to what you know as a person of covenant or as a person in testament. That has nothing to do with these so-called not, not knowing who Jesus is people. That, that's just malarkey. So in this case, I don't. maybe that's why they weren't present or held accountable because they were younger, under 20. Which it makes sense because how could God? Why would God do that? If it was other, if it was of heathen people, I could see it. But of His own people, He made it clear under twenty that there's different rule of exemption to them. He said that. So why would He go against that principle? That doesn't. 
So to answer your question, so then you go back to Psalm 151, I was just telling you. Well, you don't have it in your Bible, but it's in mine. Yeah. It's not in your Bible, but it's in mine. You have to have me read it to you. You're like, what's that? Psalm 150, what? Liar! I'm <laughs> just kidding. Isn't it really neat? Because after all these years, there's another psalm I remember, right? Yep. Wait, yeah. Canon or so it was written by him after he fought. He, he wrote this right after the fight with Goliath, it says. And he says, I was little among my brethren, and the youngest, it's a little short, by the way. I was little among my brethren, and the youngest of my father's family. I fed my father's flocks. My hands had made an instrument, and my fingers had tuned a psaltery. But who will tell my Lord? My Lord heareth himself. He sent his messenger and took me from my father's flock and anointed me with anointing oil. My brothers were comely and great, but the Lord did not delight in them. He went, he, I went out to meet the Philistine, and he, and he cursed me by his idols. But I drew his own sword and cut off his head and took away reproach from the children of Israel. Done. That's what he says. So why isn't that in it's here? Like was it canonized? It, it, well, it's, the explanation they give here is they say, this is a Septuagint text, an additional psalm with this title. It says here that this psalm was supposed to follow Psalm 144, oh. but apparently they, it says it was thought, let me see, what's the word, this word, what's the word supernumerary? What's that? What's that word mean? English, supernumerary? English woman, Tracy. What's that word, Tracy? What is supernumerary? Super, mm. is the word supernumerary. How do you spell that? Super Maybe that's why. Psalm 144. Yeah, in Psalm 144, does it say it in yours? Does, does it say it that way in yours at the end? That's 144. S U P E, super, and then N U M E R A R Y. Yeah. Now there's a super is usually someone in a crowd scene on stage. Doesn't it? That's what the normal well, I think what they're, they're saying is they don't think that it, like, it says, um, I thought it was just, there's there's some of they didn't think it stood alone by itself. Well, no, extra. like in the Apocrypha, there's books where, like, Ma Mary, like, supposedly Mary's bragging that she's going to be the right hand of oh. God. Oh. So if they're, like, <coughs> No, I didn't die. It is an no. adjective? No. Yeah, like no, no, that's what I'm saying, no. She knows they don't. But it says it word for word like that? What verse? Like, it's like extra. So Numbers 26.11, you said? So Numbers 26.11 is where you see. Oh, right there. Hey, 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 Lainey, did you see the Korah thing in, Psalm, in Numbers 26? In Numbers 26, when it says, The earth opened up its mouth in verse 10, swallowed them up at Kor with Korah at the time when his company died, when the fire consumed 250, and there was a sign, but the children of Korah died not. It says that in verse 11. So that's okay. So I didn't even, so I, thank you. Todd brought that up. 26, 11. Todd remembered that, not me. <laughs> well, you, how'd you remember it? I looked it up, I did research. Yes. That's okay, you have to do it again. Yeah, yeah do it again. It's all good. So, I feel I was going with that. Todd, why was See that? here, it he was necessarily no. required or desired. Maybe it means we'd already heard the story at home. Maybe. Oh, maybe it's just excess. And that's an excess. Yeah, it's not, nothing new was being said. It's not like a comedic concern. Yep. So the point being, with, so with Solomon, he wrote Proverbs, Song of Solomon, Ecclesiastes, and he wrote one psalm. So that's four. 
And then Jeremiah, what, 3, 7, 17. That's an old marker. Okay. So, what's that? Okay, sure, go ahead. Take a picture. Dianoia? Dianoia? I always pronounce it Dianoia. I think I spelled that totally wrong. No, I've always said Dianoia. That's how I pronounce it, Dianoia. I, I mean, I spelled it wrong, I guess. I don't even know. But you know what? I find that people say the words that we know differently, too. You know, other words. So. So who knows? Who knows? Who knows? And look at the conversation. Or listen to it on Who Wrote Our Bible. I just told you. So, my, so the point I was bringing out here is that if you have the dominant number of scriptures by Peter, Paul, and John, and those are the ones that were the earmarks that he knew the most, we should pay more attention to so the writings of Moses and David and Solomon because they wrote the dominant, which is interesting. Um, so I'm just well, saying. Psalms is big. But Psalms is one book, but in it's essence, David did write a lot of it. It's very popular. People yeah. write those. Mm -hmm. uh, which, one, which one was the uh, prophet? Solomon. He wrote Solomon. Oh, Solomon wrote Solomon. Yeah. yeah. But it just kind of, it, so if you, I always made a, I, I always said if I was going to write, talk to three people in the New Testament, it'd be these guys. So I never thought about David. I used yeah. to, I said Moses, Solomon, and Job. I didn't think of David as much, but now and I then, will. And then <laughs> Solomon writing Proverbs makes a lot of sense because here it has, that's like a really oh, big wisdom. It's split up. It's this first half is written about all his um, horny dog ways. And the last half's written about more of his, you know, wisdom in life. It's different. You can see the difference. He talks about the woman going out of the bed and all this adultery stuff in the first half, and he kind of switches in the second half. He talks differently about it. D-I-N-O-I-A. D-I, say it again. D-I, say it again. D-I-A-N-I-O-N. Say it, spell it, though. Dianoia. Did I say it? Or how do you? Dianoia. <laughs> dia, dia, true. Yeah, dia. I said Dianoia. I said Dianoia. Well, you say Dianoia. Okay. I don't know, man. Where's the. Okay. All right, so you got a picture of this? You got a picture? You're good? How many erases? And by the way, if you were to align, okay. so Solomon was the wise one that aligns with Paul, right? And then you have Peter and John, of the ones who have God's heart, John and David are similar. So this is more akin to John. This is more akin to Paul. And then the leadership of Moses would align with Peter. What a coincidence. It's kind of like they align, if you know what I'm saying. Erase it now. Oh, I can't get it. No, it's my feet are. <laughs> my feet still. Don't overdo it. Don't overdo it, man. You good? You, you good? Are you good? You good, babe? You good? Okay. 
All right, so. Oh, that's that dude. Um, Gene. Gene something. I know his name. No, his name is. <laughs> no, you do. Fundamental, fundamental understanding. The general understanding. The general. It's not found in the whole of the Bible, it says. Yes, it is. It's just that form of the word. That form of the word, probably. That's going to be in your spiritual growth cycle chart under the purple, under no, the uh, the, expa the the papers I wrote, the paper I wrote. This one, this one. The inside there, inside the spiritual expounded the paper. No, the paper, right there. This. It's oh. In, oh, in our new one. It's in this paper. No, it's the old one I gave you last year. But it's in there under the description of under the purple and okay. of the of the Nemiscos, um, Kelio Cease person. That's how I pronounce it.
Hello. I'll be right there. Since I'm getting kind of tired, <laughs> I'm just going to do this. This is an exercise I was going to do with you guys about the apostles and how you see yourself in these guys. <laughs> 